Arcade's conflict is about his identity. He is torn between a sense of loyalty and tradition to his father and adoptive family and a desire to be independent, self-made. He feels caught between generations and cultures and isn't sure who he should be or how, if at all, to use the legacy, material and otherwise, left to him by his father. Arcade's endings are intended to reflect that no one is damaged more by reality than the idealist. He does his best to be practical and rational, but there is a strong idealist streak in him, the followers in general. In some of Arcade's best endings, meaning the circumstances he thought he wanted, he is still somewhat disappointed by how things turned out. In his worst endings, he can wind up bitterly disillusioned, brutally murdered, crucified, casually executed and discarded in a ditch, or even defiantly suicidal. Arguably the worst ending is the one in which Arcade is given to Caesar as an enslaved doctor. The existence is so unbearable to him that he does what the historical Cato the Younger did at Utica. Rather than give Caesar satisfaction, he disembowels himself. Like Cato, Arcade cannot live in a world where everything he tried to resist has come to pass. Joshua Sawyer Formspring, question. Hey, sorry if this has been asked before, but I had a question about Arcade Ganon specifically the ending where he's sold to Caesar. Why doesn't he kill him during the surgery, or even refuse to do the operation so Caesar might die of his tumor? Sure, he'd probably be crucified for either of these things, but given that he's willing to disembowel himself later on I would have assumed he would have been willing to die in order to strike a blow against the legion, especially since slavery is the only thing to look forward to if he lives. Arcade is an idealist, so I did not think that he would do harm in his capacity as a doctor nor would he refuse to provide medical aid even to a mortal enemy. Yes, Arcade will follow you around and blast everything in the Mojave Wasteland with his Plasma Defender, but the circumstances of gameplay are different from when he's put in the position of providing, or not, medical aid. Arcade is not a pragmatic person, so in the circumstances where he becomes a long-term instrument of Caesar, post-endgame, he disembowels himself rather than living as a tool of evil, in his mind. His suicide is intended to mirror the death of one of the most notable idealists of the Roman Republic, Cato the Younger. His name is also intended to reflect his idealism. At a certain point in time, the region of Arcadia became associated with an idyllic state of being, later utilized in the Memento Mori and in Arcadia Ego. Joshua Sawyer on Tumblr. There are two sources Caesar, IIRC, refers to, Gibbon's The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire and Julius Caesar's Commentary de Bello Gallico, Commentaries on the Gallic War. It is certainly possible that he read other primary sources. Based on Arcade's education, it's likely that the followers of the Apocalypse had access to other Roman and Greek literature, including writings by Sallust and Lucan. As Arcade and Caesar both know Latin, it is likely that the textbooks they used also contained snippets of Roman literature and quotes as Sententiae Antiquae very common in Wheelock's and many other books. Because the primary purpose of contemporary, i.e., 20th, 21st century, Latin education is typically not conversation or writing, but comprehension of classic literature, the use of these quotes, references is common, though often without context. E.g., a student may learn that, festina lente, means, hasten slowly, but may not know that it came from Suetonius who was quoting Augustus who, in turn, had borrowed the adage from Greek in the first place. And even if they did learn all that, the followers might not have access to Suetonius' text, De Vita Caesarium. J. E. Sawyer